Welcome to Successful Philanthropy. I'm your host, Jean Shaparoff. This show is designed to highlight the work of philanthropic leaders here in the United States and then beyond. Today with us, a fascinating man. His name, Dick Sanford. And Dick is the CEO and founder of Operation Warm. Let's all welcome Dick Sanford. And Dick, it's very nice to have you on Successful Philanthropy. Thank you for having me. Now, Dick, my first question is, what exactly is Operation Warm? Operation Warm was founded about 23 years ago uh, to provide brand new winter coats to children in poverty throughout the country. We have, at this point, I started, I guess, year one, uh, about 58 children going to a little shop in the adjoining town that I live in, and that's all they had in stock. I bought all their coats, provided these coats to these children that I had witnessed standing without coats, without literally anything, in a very cold December day, waiting for a school bus, and that kind of shocked me. I went out and bought all these coats, went to uh, my church to find out where you find these children. And from that point on, Operation Warm was born. Today we have served, well, at the end of this year, we'll serve about, cumulatively, about close to 5 million children. So you actually provide coats to children in need who may otherwise not have a winter coat at all or they're wearing a very old winter coat and what a wonderful thing to do and I love that you're almost up to giving out five million coats. Now are you across the United States or are you mostly focused in Pennsylvania where your operation is? No we're throughout every state in the union. Uh, we also provide brand new uh, uh, shoes for children. We started that a year and a half ago or so and so it's, it's providing not only a coat, and we've all obviously experienced the cold, and uh, this winter has been unusually cold, and uh, we've all experienced that. So it's something very simple, but the children that we deal with are children that literally have nothing. Many of them go home and use the coat to sleep in in the evening. Um, that coat is never thrown away essentially, because the coat then goes to a sibling. They, as the child grows, it gets turned over to, to a sibling in the family. So um, they're well used. Dick, you founded this charity in 1998. Now, many people watching this show, they may work for a charity or they may have their own charity. Very curious, how did you go from starting off with only giving out 58 coats to now giving out close to 5 million. How did you grow your charity? Well, Jean, I was very uh, fortunate in, the, uh, in my other life, if you would, uh, prior to 23 years ago, uh, I uh, had uh, been quite successful in corporate life and was able to fund these, this organization, this 501c3 for the first uh, several years. I then took the concept, the project, to a local Rotary Club where I was a founding member and talked about providing 2,000 coats to children in the, in the local community, um, which we did. And uh, had other, then I approached a series of other Rotary Clubs. And Rotary, as you may know, are uh, organizations that are here to serve, serve mankind in general. And so it was a very easy project for them to pick up and it was very localized. Uh, so we could identify a local school or group of children that were in desperate need. And as we did, we just replicated that with a series of Rotary Clubs. Uh, I then went out to a series of foundations uh, and people who all knew me uh, and uh, they were all uh, willing to support me. And, and then I started hiring people. So initially I did this all on my own and we packed boxes with Rotarians in, in, my, in my, uh, my own facilities and uh, the thing then grew. Then I started hiring people as the organization got more successful and I was able to negotiate as I was beginning to get volume increases, I was able to go out and get much, much better prices 
uh, for the product that I was uh, uh, providing and I was serving for. As opposed to going and buying in retail, I went into I went and found somebody who could manufacture for me. Happened to be in China, and uh, I and from that point on we started manufacturing our own product. The product was always going to be something that um, was brand new. It had to be brand new because only to me, by the grace of God, is where you end up. And so these poor children who have absolutely nothing, uh, not necessarily their fault. Uh, so there had to be a brand new coat. It had to be, it had to be multiple colors because from a manufacturing standpoint, we could provide product less expensively by making them all blue, if you would. Uh, we didn't do that. We had to be with the most uh, current colors there were so the kids could be proud of these things. And so hence, we then grew, the organization got more successful. We put on more people. We started reaching further and further and further rotary clubs and signed an arrangement with the International Association of Firefighters, all the firefighters in the country. And so we were able to distribute the product in that fashion and it just continued to grow. What a wonderful thing you're doing. Now, one thing you do, which is I think quite unusual for a charity is that you are actually manufacturing the coats that you're giving out. And of course, this is not a business for the charity, I don't think. But how does that work exactly? Well, we, we manufacture the product initially uh, when I went to China, and, and we'll, we can chat about that shortly, uh, as I'm, I'm now going to be bringing that into the United States. Uh, initially, conceptually was, you know, pockets are only so deep out there to, for people to provide funding for, for any project. And so I said, you know, if I get so many dollars and I'm here to serve children, then I've got to be able to provide a product at the least expensive cost, as opposed to purchasing locally in the retail stores, even getting discounts from retail stores, made a lot of sense to go overseas. So I searched and found and went to the variety of manufacturing shows in, in the country here and found suppliers and manufacturers who could help us. And that's how we ended up manufacturing. So is the manufacturing done here in Pennsylvania or in China? No, the, the, the manufacturing is done in China. Uh, we are now looking at, however, bringing that product back here. I have tried it before. Uh, our volumes weren't necessarily high enough, but uh, I, uh, I was able to get the product uh, for about two thirds less cost in China than I could get it done manufactured here. However, our volumes are high enough and there's something much more important today, and that's the whole concept of ESG and societal issues and, and uh, uh, environmental issues. And so we're bringing it back here. Uh, and that we, but we are, our volumes are high enough that we, and I believe people are concerned more so bringing it back here, forgetting all the other issues we're dealing from a world perspective. But uh, I, I don't think we'll have an issue here in, in uh, continuing to grow the organization and fund it in the United States. For our audience, we are with Dick Sanford, and Dick is the CEO and founder of Operation Warm. Operation Warm provides warm winter coats to children in need across the United States. And Dick, how many states are you in now? We're in every state in the union. Uh, obviously, we um, uh, don't provide coats to Southern California or Florida but we're providing new athletic shoes to those communities. Uh, that is a project we just started um, a year and a half ago, and we'll be doing uh, hopefully 100,000 children this year with brand new, brand new shoes. We're only going to the third grade with those shoes because once, a ch especially boys, once a boy gets to the fourth grade, he is uh, more desirous of wearing a Michael Jordan shoe with a a name brand sports, uh, but and, and won't won't take us. But uh, these children uh, are in desperate need of shoes. You know, an Operation Warm's mission has always been focused really on on the entire child, and it's not just it's just not only making a child warm. Again, we've all been cold, so we understand what that is. It's very simple, but it's it's. It really provides emotional warmth and the confidence to socialize and 
and succeed and hope for a, these children have never received anything new in their life ever. And so it's, it's providing, empowering these children with um, self-confidence in a way, a self-esteem aspect so that they can attend school. Gosh, if they don't attend school because they don't have a coat, that is an issue. So we're, they're able to socialize and feel proud of the fact. And it's really, it is so much fun to provide these coats to these children. You see them, it's the, in the events that we have, the children will line up and they'll pick their own colors. And, you know, all the girls will run over to all the multiplicity of, of, of pink coats and the boys to the blue coat and the, and the green coats. And the, but it's just so much fun. You, it's such an, it's an enormously fun day to do this and witnessing witnessing a child for the first time getting getting something at one of the first events I did, uh, I still reflect on this, this is 23 some odd years ago, uh, in Philadelphia, I gave uh, a coat to a child and he came over to me a few minutes later and, and uh, tugged on my shirt and said, uh, Mr. Could you, could you give me a piece of paper and put on it some words that will tell my mommy that I didn't steal this? I was just shattered. I mean, that in our country, we're dealing with that. That is just something I just, anyway, these children, when they get to a school, if the school budgets are short, they can't wash their clothes. I mean, we're dealing with desperation here. And so for us to provide something that is absolutely needed and then can get their self-esteem up and get them to school and make them feel emotionally powerful for the first, it's really simple. Simple idea. Well, it's a wonderful idea. Now, one of the things that a lot of people look at when they want to donate to a charity is um, the overhead. What are their actual costs? Now, I wrote a book on philanthropy called Successful Philanthropy, How to Make a Life by What You Give. And in that book, I donate a chapter to how to analyze a charity. So naturally, Dick, before I interviewed you, I went on your website, I read a little bit about your organization, and I saw that your overhead was, I think, about six or seven percent of all the money brought in, and that's a very low overhead. How do you manage to do that, and are my numbers correct? Uh, I think you're a little high, but uh, it uh, has been in the five to six percent range, and we just manage it that way. This is this is run like a business. It absolutely is driven like a business. This is we don't waste money here. Um, everybody has 42 jobs, if you would, and uh, we're we're here to serve children. We're not here to serve ourselves. Uh, as you know, coming from the philanthropic world, um, you know it's very difficult to attract very very um, uh, at corporate types because uh, because you can't pay them as much as as they would receive in in corporate life. Uh, we just provide a whole series of other benefits, like you get some extra days off and this and to to allow. To, why would you want to work here as, a, as opposed to going to a to a corporation where you can make more money uh, than coming to work here? Well, they come here because of the the culture and the concept of helping a child when you. It's just amazing. We really have a discipleship going on out there. When we go to these cities and these events throughout the country, uh, we are talking to so many people. And if we can get one person in the room to think about helping others, and I don't care if you're planting a tree on Main Street, it doesn't really matter to me. Help mankind in some fashion. Well, I, I love your ideas. And I love that your overhead is very low because people then want to give. And I also, you said something very important that your charity is run like a business and no question to our audience, a charity has to be run like a business. And this is why many people who are involved in the business world often get on boards because they have the business acumen to advise a charity. And uh, what was your business, Dick, before you started Operation Warm? Well, we're going back a long time now. Uh, going back 50 years, my professional life started with Arthur Anderson, in the public accounting firm, uh, one of the big eight back, uh, I guess, maybe 50 years ago. And uh, I was with them in both New York and uh, in uh, California, the Bay Area, and then uh, joined a company by the name of uh, Commodore. Commodore 
computer. It was a, actually a watch and calculator company. I did not like living in California. Coming from New York, I mean, I love the weather and all that, but I felt that there were too many people that were more concerned with material things than, than uh, you know, what's the color of your new Porsche? I didn't have a Porsche at that point, nor do I have today. But uh, the point is, uh, I, I just didn't, it just didn't fit with me. I was in Silicon Valley and it was very difficult to build a finance team, which I was, I came on as a US controller, became executive vice president of Commodore after discovering a, we bought a company on the East Coast, Pennsylvania. That's how I got to Pennsylvania and bought a company here, a chip company. And I uncovered the fellow going, kissing the girls goodbye, uh, who was an inventor of the pet computer. He was leaving the company and I was able to convince him to stay. He stayed and Commodore went from a reasonably small company to a very successful company. I then left as executive vice president and started my own company, which was in the back then, uh, you could not purchase a computer the way you could today. And uh, we ultimately became uh, the largest uh, provider of personal computers in the country as a reseller, if you would, of products from IBM, Apple Computer, Compaq, Hewlett Packard. We represented about 20% or so, 23% of all the revenue stream for personal computers that came through those manufacturers. Well, this is all very interesting. And the, really the point of my question was that, Dick, you have a business background. You worked with, I believe, an accounting firm, and then you worked with a couple of major businesses. And that experience helped you start your own charity. Um, and I find also with me, I have an MBA from Columbia in finance, and mm -hmm. I now serve on nine charity boards. And wow. those charity boards, since I have the background, it's very helpful. It enables me to take a look at their financial statements. And, and of course, if I'm going to give my time, I want to make sure I'm giving it to a good charity. Uh, Dick, for our audience, how does one donate to Operation Warm? It's very simple. It's uh, operationwarm.org uh, slash donate. And you go on our okay. website and pull that up. And, and hopefully in these... Uh, these cold winter days, you'll consider supporting us because basically what we're doing is the funding you provide today is um, supporting a child in a community that you have to live in, but we're really building, we need to be building inventory for next year, especially with the supply line issues that we're all experiencing. Must, we must now purchase our product a lot earlier, have it in inventory a lot earlier. Hopefully you get it in inventory. There's so many organizations that don't. But we plan very, very well and we get it. But it's more costly to bring it in earlier and warehouse it and all the rest of it in order to have it for the following winter. Dick, I recently read that you partnered with Nordstrom and I believe it's a matching fund program where they're going to match whoever donates up to 250,000. Is that correct? Yes, the numbers the numbers move, but they are how they we we are supported by many many organizations. Nordstrom, a great great partners of ours, and yes, if you went on the website, but if you purchase something from Nordstrom, you'd see our our advertisement. If we're their advertisement, their partnership come up uh, immediately. But Abercrombie and Fitch, Federal Express, they're all. Very, very, I believe that we're the number one. Uh, 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 organization with the Federal Express organization and have been for the next the last uh, six, seven years. And that's a testimony to the work you do because these major corporations like FedEx, Nordstrom, et cetera, et cetera, would never partner with a charity that they felt wasn't well run and didn't have a good mission. I love your mission to provide warm winter coats and then athletic shoes to children. And just as an aside, I remember many years ago being in Cambodia and I was outside of Siem Reap, which is the, pretty much their major city. And I was with a, a charity group and we were visiting an orphanage. We were visiting people in their homes where we were providing funding for water wells. And then we visited a school where the children uh, were learning English and I remember seeing the children walking to school in broken down flip-flops, tattered uniforms, 
And so at that time, I donated uniforms for the 1,000 children and the shoes. Dick, we have a little time left. I want to ask you a question about growth. You've been able to really grow this charity over a long period. What's on the horizon for you? Do you think you'll start working internationally? Or are you going to contain the work you do to the United States? That's a great question. And, and we've been asked by some of our partners to go overseas. But you know, Jane, to me, being successful in business, and you certainly know this, you've got to focus. If you start getting yourself unfocused, if you would, you're going to get yourself in trouble. But we are not selling a, selling a product. We're, we're in so-called competition with many, many other wonderful charities out there. And so um, we've just, we've, our mission, our, our bylaws, our, the mission here is to serve a child. Now, we have so many children here. There's probably about 30 million children here in the United States that are in poverty or simply poor. They don't have anything. And so for us to say, okay, let's up and go somewhere else, uh, I just don't think that makes sense. What we will be doing, however, we will be transitioning into, from China into the United States. It's a transition period that'll probably take, oh, five years. You're not, this is not something you just start here. Uh, we'll manufacture that very slowly. Uh, we'll, we'll transition here to the United States. The product will be... Um, um, environmentally 100% sustainable, reworkable. Um, they, we will not, the apparel industry has a horrible history of uh, a lot of waste, uh, not paying, uh, uh, you know, it's, you've, you've seen the, the, the U.S. consumer wanting for 10 bucks wants to buy three t-shirts. Well, how do you think the person who's making that thing, wherever that person may live, can't survive. I mean, that's ridiculous. So, but that's the way it's been being done. And it's changing now with regulation and, and consumer mindset and, and concern for our planet. This is all coming. So we're going to come back here. We're going to come here for the first time. Again, I mentioned earlier that we have been here. Uh, we, I tried re recycling product, recycling bottles 18 years ago, but nobody wanted to pay for it. But you know, now that we are large enough to do this from an environmental standpoint, we're here to help the planet, we're here to help, but the main focus is here to help children. So it's gotta be done here. And, uh, and we'll be, I'm sure, employing people and taking them out of poverty at the same point. So we'll be employing people in a poverty condition and then the coat will ultimately end up in the child's hands who's in poverty. And that's truly wonderful. Uh, Dick, I also read that you were very involved with uh, children in the foster care system and that you're providing coats and athletic shoes for them. And we have a few minutes left. Just mention that and tell us a little bit about that part of your operation. Well, we have, you know, we get, we get, we have something called a wish list, if you would. Uh, there are organizations that Organizations that call us and want and, and are providing these products to children in communities all over the country. But there's a wish list that we started a couple of years ago and it's really tripled, um, demonstrating the need that's out there, forgetting what you read about in the newspapers. Um, today, we have about 345,000 children that have, or organizations that have reached us and, and said, please give us coats. Well, we can only provide the coats if we get the funding for it. If it took New York City alone, just New York City, about 25% of the children uh, in New York City or about uh, of the 25% uh, of the children there are in poverty. I mean, 450,000 children, order of magnitude. Um, 74 organizations have asked us to provide coats to these children in foster systems. Well, we can only afford to provide, we, we need 15,000 coats for them. We've only received funding for 10,000. So we want to support everybody, but we need the funding. So hopefully and your, your listeners at opera will come to operationwarm.org slash donate and help us, especially in New York City at this point, uh, so we can get the, those additional children served. Thank you very much, Dick. You have given an excellent interview and 
it's hard not to feel um, uh, compassion towards any child who doesn't have a warm winter coat or doesn't have uh, nice shoes, uh, athletic shoes. And the work you're doing is really, really so incredibly important for our audience. We have been with Dick Sanford. He is the CEO and founder of Operation Warm, a charity that works across the United States to provide warm winter coats and athletic shoes for children in need. And as we all know, children need to stay warm and they need to have proper shoes. This concludes Successful Philanthropy. Our guest today, Dick Sanford. I'm Jean Shaparoff, your host. I'll see you next week. Goodbye, thank you.